I'm Dr. Molly Marty, and welcome to Resiliency Matters. What if you could learn from a woman who deeply reconnected to her life purpose after experiencing a freak accident that left her quadriplegic? Would you spend the next 28 minutes with us? What if in the next 10 minutes you could hear profound perspectives on resilience? Would you hang out with us? Who is us? My other half today is Renee Bondi. Renee is a woman who overcame great odds and doctor's prognosis to not only regain her singing voice, but to start a new career as an inspirational singer, songwriter, and humanitarian. Welcome, Renee. Thank you for having me, Molly. Thank you. So let's go back to your childhood, kind of lay a foundation. And briefly, what did your childhood look like? I had a great childhood. I uh, was raised in the middle of an orange grove. My dad was an orange grower in Southern California. So we played outside a lot, rode horses a lot. I'm the youngest of four children. My sisters and my brother might call me spoiled. I laughed my way through high school, laughed my way through college. I had a good childhood. Wonderful. And say in your late 20s, what was your life looking like then? Well, I had graduated from college as a music education uh, major, and now I was teaching vocal music choir at the local public high school. I was engaged to be married. Our wedding was just two months away. So life was great in my 20s. And how did the day of the accident play out? I was 29 years old. I had just conducted our orchestra um, and, uh, at our uh, high school school musical, went to bed that night, wrote out a bunch of lesson plans, and did a little last minute uh, organization for the week, went to bed. Then the next thing I know, out of a sound, deep sleep, I woke up standing on the end of my bed, diving head first onto my head, broke my neck at cervical vertebrae four. And to this day, we have absolutely no idea what happened. I don't have any history of sleepwalking, any history of any kind of disease that would cause a seizure. The only thing we can think of is that I must have been having some sort of a dream where I was diving, but I don't remember the dream at all, not at all. But the doctors said that I would never walk again, that I would never have functional use of my hands again, and that I certainly would never sing again. And then as you were finding your way forward, uh, six years later, um, you experienced another tragic accident. Well, six years later, I was now married. My wonderful fiance that I was um, engaged to, uh, we got married one year after I got out of the hospital, uh, which I'm blown away by. He's a very noble, very good man. And this year we're celebrating 29 years of marriage. So life is good. And I went back into teaching. I'm back teaching full time. Uh, and then I gave birth to a beautiful baby boy, naturally. And hey, I didn't feel a thing during that, <laughs> um, during that delivery. So life was just wonderful. Well, nine days before the delivery of our son, we get a phone call from uh, my sister. She had been in an accident and uh, riding three-wheeler ATVs out near Yuma, Arizona, and fell off broke a bunch of ribs that punctured her lungs, but also broke her back, leaving her now also paralyzed, but from the waist down, permanently confined to a wheelchair as a paraplegic. And I can tell you for the first time in my life, I was mad. I was mad at God. What's the deal? You want two of us in wheelchairs? And that anger just took over. I was so mad that here, our family had gotten through my injury. I was now married, just days away from delivering our son. And then bam, we're right back to square one again with Michelle going through it. And I was, I was out of control with my anger. How do you even begin to deal with that type of anger? It's a good question. It was a brand new emotion for me. I'd never experienced it before in my life. Uh, but to see Michelle, uh, my sister starting, at the road that I had just gotten over. I was, well, <clears throat> one day, um, it was a Saturday morning, my husband and I had to be out of the house, and I was barking orders at him. I was screaming, I'm yelling, I'm saying, if you'd gotten up an hour earlier, maybe we'd be on time. I was just throwing him these zingers left and right, as if he had nothing better to do. He had a quadriplegic wife and a newborn baby, and here I'm, I'm throwing sores at him. And he stopped and he looked at me, and I looked back with this snotty face at him. And then when I looked again, I could see in his eyes 
His, he didn't say a word, but his eyes were telling me, where did my wife go? It's okay if her body doesn't work, but I need her heart and her mind. And right then, I said out loud, got it. And I bowed my head in the hallway of my house, started crying, saying, Lord, I surrender this anger. I surrender this anger to you, God. I surrender this anger. I knew your peace at one time. I don't know it now. I surrender this anger. And I kept babbling this short prayer, just like that, of surrender over and over to God. And not just once, but seven, eight, nine times a day. Every time I felt this come up, I would say, God, I surrender this anger. I lay it at your feet. I surrender my anger, God. I, I lay it on your shoulders. I lay it on your head. I kept babbling this prayer for about two or three months. And then one day, I was out having lunch with a girlfriend of mine. She said something to me. I just busted up laughing. And we're in the middle of this restaurant, just cracking up laughing. Big old laughter tears coming down my face. And I realized, ah, you did it. You replaced my anger with your peace. It really came back. Such powerful mirrors in those stories. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that. It's already time for tool number one. The time goes quickly here at <laughs> Resiliency Matters. So although a tragic loss can drastically change us, it does not need to define us. Dealing with the dark days when we come back. When you download the Mediacom Connect mobile care app, you can troubleshoot issues, look at your data usage, pay your bill, get appointment reminders, and even schedule a time for us to call you without ever leaving the couch. It's like having your own customer service agent. Remember, your TiVo install is tomorrow. And technician right in your phone. Mediacom Connect mobile care. Download the free app today from iTunes or Google Play. With TiVo, you can record shows to watch later, of course. But you can also access popular video apps right on your TV. And you can watch your recordings or stream live TV on your mobile device, making any screen in your home a TV screen. TiVo's free app even lets you schedule your recordings when you're not at home. Seriously, you have to watch this show. Don't mind if I do. With TiVo, you'll never have to miss a thing. For special offers on TiVo, call 888-SIMPLIFY. This is your escape from a long day, your Tuesday night routine. It's the one hour you reserve just for you. Right now, it's the only thing that will calm him down. That's why at Mediacom, we're working harder to bring you more superior TV entertainment every day. Greater reliability, incredible picture and sound. So from the big screen to the little screen, to the great outdoors, nothing gets in the way of the things you love. Hi, I'm Dr. Molly Marty, and welcome back to Resiliency Matters. We're speaking with Renee Bondi. In your experience, Renee, what has the greatest challenge been about being quadriplegic? I would say the relentlessness of being dependent on others. I can't drive, and so always getting somebody to drive me somewhere I work full time, getting there and back. Um, having somebody brush your teeth, help you blow your nose. Um, sit up comfortably right in the wheelchair, uh, grocery shopping, cooking, uh, just the relentlessness. It just doesn't go away. And that is, I think, has really been taxing for me. Yeah. And has, have these challenges also served in some way as fertile ground for growth? Oh, you bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely it has. For example, uh, some time back, I had to uh, interview and train for a new caregiver. And I, I'm telling you, training a new caregiver, I imagine it must be like training a new husband or something. And that, and that you just, they, they need to know you so well. When you have a caregiver, they know exactly how you like things in your house, where things go in the cupboards, where they go in the refrigerator, um, how you like your hair blow dried, how, how you like your makeup put on. Um, just, just silly little details that... Uh, other people would not know. And uh, so when you have to train somebody new, it's like oh, all over again. So I, I really went through a phase where I was just really sad. I just, 
I was really sad. And, and I was praying, saying, God, I, I don't want to do this. You know I don't want to do this. And I, I, after crying and blah, 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 you know, getting everything out to him, I got really quiet, which I think is a really important part of prayer when you're just silent afterwards. And uh, for about five minutes, I just was silent. And very clearly in my mind, very clearly came this phrase, praise, praise. And I thought, praise you, God? I've always wanted to be one of those kind of people that praises you no matter what, no matter when. All right, bring it on. I'm going to do that. So I went to my computer concordance, and I typed in the word praise, and it populated all the addresses at the times that the word praise was used in, in the Bible. And as you can imagine, there was hundreds of times. But I started looking them all up, and I narrowed it down to just the times when praise was used while people were facing insurmountable tasks. Because quite frankly, hiring a new caregiver right then was insurmountable to me. I just did not want to do it again. Well, I found several, but there's two, two stories in particular that hit me hard. One was in the book of uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 23, and uh, King David is old now, and he's telling his, Sol his son Solomon how to build the temple. And he said, all right, you've got to get all the Levites. There's, there's going to be 38,000 that are over 30 years old. Gather them all. 24,000 of them are going to be workers. 6,000 are going to be officials. 4,000 are going to be gatekeepers. And as I'm reading the scripture, it said, 4,000 are to praise the Lord with the instruments that David's going to provide. And I paused there, Molly, for a second. I went, 4,000 men? And their sole purpose is to praise God while facing this huge project? Now, I was driving here to the, to the TV studio, and I did see a little construction, but I have to tell you, I did not see one guy walking around with a trumpet, praising God anywhere. But look at how far we've come from the power of praising God. Another story is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and it's the story of King Jehoshaphat, where Jeho Jehoshaphat is a good king, and he's having this vast army coming at him. And what he does is he sends men ahead of his army to sing Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And I was laughing. I'm reading this in scripture going, oh my gosh, I'm trying to put this in today's day that, that let's say the, the, the Marine Corps Army Band is going out in front of, of, of our army or our Marines. And I maybe, maybe if there was a song going to be sung, it might be uh, save us, protect us, some kind of a song of protection. But no, that's not what Jehoshaphat says. He says, send out the guys in front of, the army singing, doo, 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 doo. <laughs> give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Give thanks for his love. It was talking about love when you're going into army. But no, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And when I read those scriptures, man, it convicted me. I went, all right, there is power in praising God even when we don't, when we don't feel like it, even when we have no more gas in our tank to do anything. And when I started praising God from that moment on, Lord, I praise you. I praise you that this caregiver even wants this job. I praise you that she has the patience to do this. I praise you that I have a roof over, over my head. I praise you that, that I'm not on the ventilator. I praise you, Lord, that I've got a wheelchair that works. I praise you that, that I have a, a house that I can come home to every day that I'm not homeless. And man, when I started praising him, it changed my focus, which changed my mind, which changed my heart, which ultimately changed my attitude towards being quadriplegic and towards this insurmountable task of training a new caregiver. Beautiful story of when we change our perspective, we change our world, right? In a, in, in a huge way. We change our heart and therefore, again, we go back to not being so negative because we see what we have. Mm -hmm. So how did you um, regain your voice and, and find this new career as a, a singer that we hope to hear from <laughs> at this show? It's, it's so funny because, I, you know, I went to college to have my back to the audience, right? Conducting choirs so that the choir would shine, not for me to shine. But after I broke my neck, it's as if the Lord just kept using my joystick to spin this wheelchair around to face the audience. I never initially thought, oh, I'm going to be a speaker. 
not in a million years. But what happened was that the phone just kept ringing. Uh, would you come to this church? Would you come to this conference? Would you come to this event? Um, share your story and the tools um, that you have learned, quite frankly, so that the audience doesn't have to break your neck to learn it. Uh, just give us the, the spark notes. Give us the <laughs> cliff notes, right? Um, but that couldn't happen, actually, uh, without my singing voice coming back. And there were a lot of people praying um, that I would be productive in some way. Because I was. I was, I was a go-getter. I had just been award teacher of the year um, as a teacher um, at 29 years old. I say that not to applaud myself at all, but to share with you how much passion I had mm -hmm. towards teaching. And so uh, I had a friend who was a vocal coach, and she came to the hospital and said, I don't care if you walk again, but you got to sing again. And she started putting weights on my stomach that when I was laying on my back in the hospital, that it would help strengthen the diaphragmatic muscle that was no longer working. So every time I took a breath, it lift the weights, strengthening whatever diaphragmatic muscle I had left. And here came my voice. And sing you do. So tool number two, when facing insurmountable tasks, do not underestimate the power of being grateful for all you do have. Praise out loud. Can we convince Renee to sing for us? We sure hope so. Stay tuned. When you download the Mediacom Connect mobile care app, you can troubleshoot issues, look at your data usage, pay your bill, get appointment reminders, and even schedule a time for us to call you without ever leaving the couch. It's like having your own customer service agent. Remember, your TiVo install is tomorrow. And technician right in your phone. Mediacom Connect mobile care. Download the free app today from iTunes or Google Play. With TiVo, you can record shows to watch later, of course, but you can also access popular video apps right on your TV. And you can watch your recordings or stream live TV on your mobile device, making any screen in your home a TV screen. TiVo's free app even lets you schedule your recordings when you're not at home. Seriously, you have to watch this show. Don't mind if I do. With TiVo, you'll never have to miss a thing. For special offers on TiVo, call 888-SIMPLIFY. This is your escape from a long day, your Tuesday night routine. It's the one hour you reserve just for you. Right now, it's the only thing that will calm him down. That's why at Mediacom, we're working harder to bring you more superior TV entertainment every day. Greater reliability, incredible picture and sound. So from the big screen to the little screen, to the great outdoors, nothing gets in the way of the things you love. Dr. Molly Marty, and welcome back to Resiliency Matters. We're with Renee Bondi today, and Renee has agreed to sing for us. This is a beautiful song called On Eagle's Wings that I feel that the Lord really used to get back into my head. You who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for love, say, My rock in whom I trust and he
Beautiful. Thank you for that. Oh, thank you. We have been comparing notes on favorite songs, and yes, we share we have, some have, of yes. the favorite, the servant song, the summons. Um, would you sing a little bit of the summons? It's one of my favorites. I love this because it, I really feel like it's God speaking directly to you and me. It says, I'm going to have a little cheater here for the, some words here. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? That part right there, uh, Doctor, where it says, Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? I want to be clear that that is grown, G-R-O-W-N, not G-R-O-A-N. <laughs> All right. Will you let my life be grown? Will, will you let me grow in you and you in me? That is what I feel suffering does, honestly. It provides, as you mentioned one time, provides this space mm -hmm. for God to grow in us and us in him that last line, will you let my life be grown in you and you in me, means that he wants to be intimate with us. He wants to, to grow in us and, and us in him. He cares about our every need, our every tear, and our every laughter. Wonderful. How has being dependent on others for your daily care impacted how you interact with others? I learned very early on that um, I need to be the kind of person that people want to help, that I need to be the kind of person that people want to be around. And that doesn't mean to be fake or put on this fake kindness. It doesn't. Um, but it does mean to be aware of how negative we are. Um, yes, I'm sad. Yes, there's times where I cry. Yes, there's times where I'm frustrated as all get out about being in this wheelchair. But you know what? People only want to hear your violins playing only so long. It gets tiring. I, I remember one time my mom kind of giving me a look like, yeah, I know, you've said that before. My mom is very caring and she loves me very, very much. But I'm realizing those people that drive me to work and back, those people, my caregivers that help brush my teeth, that help put my pants on, you know what? I can't, I can't be in my pity party too long. Uh, yes, they know. Yes, they hear it. That's why they're there to be compassionate. But I think we as, as quadriplegics, we depend on those around us, on our caregivers, on our support, on our volunteers, on, on our friends. And I think we need to be able to be there to say, how are you doing? How's your life going? We can't forget that people are there to help us. We can't forget about 
their needs also, that we can't be so self-centered. Very true. And uh, grace needs to be flowing in, in order for both that ways. to happen. Both <laughs> right? ways, both ways. So you speak around the world. You've met, I know you've met Pope John Paul II and, and others, but what is one of the, the biggest lessons or observations you've made? Two things, two things. When I first got the opportunity, when uh, Pope John Paul II, now St. John Paul II, came over and put his hands on my head to pray over me, I remember looking up into his eyes and seeing probably the, the, the ultimate grandpa, he had so much peace in his eyes that only comes from spending that much time with the Holy Spirit. But also being around those people that are on ventilators, those people that are in most, more difficult challenges than I am, it reminds me, it's all relative. Look at what they're going through. If they can get through that, I can get through this. Such wonderful perspectives you shared. Thank you, Renee. And here's your takeaway, your tool number three. Our negativity impacts others. Seek to be the kind of positive person that others want to be around. For more information on Renee Bondi, visit www.reneebondi.com. That's www.reneebondi.com. Thank you for joining Renee Bondi and me on MediaCom MC22, your local programming leader.